If you're watching this video, you are probably something like I was 10 years ago and I was at that stage I was thinking, I really want to have a Stormtrooper costume. I want to wear a Stormtrooper costume. Back then it was for me, it was for Carnival. It might be for Halloween for you. You might even be thinking of joining the 501st Legion. But you're also probably thinking, where on earth do I get a really good Stormtrooper costume? And probably, if you're like me, you're thinking, where do I get one ready-made so that I don't have to build it myself? Well, in this video, I'm going to look at those questions and try and answer them for you. So as I say, you're probably at the stage like I was some 10 years ago now when I was looking for my first Stormtrooper costume, looking at people with costumes that look great like this, great Stormtrooper costumes, and wondering, first of all, where are you going to get them and probably how to build them or how can I get one ready-made? Back then, I have to say, it was a lot more difficult, but I'm here to help you. And I'm going to start off, I'm, I promise I will address those two questions. I'll give you my recommendation from where, as to where you should buy your Stormtrooper costume, buy your Stormtrooper, Stormtrooper armour, and also give you a solution if you really do not want to build your own armour. But I will probably also recommend that you do so. That changed with me as well. Ten years down the line, I've built, I think, nine different suits of armor now and I was an absolute nobody I absolutely had no idea how to build anything I'm not even very good with my hands don't do any DIY but I just learnt from other people and pretty much know what I'm doing nowadays and anyway if you are familiar with my videos you will know that I'll give you one recommendation pretty much for everything that we do and this video is no exception and I'm gonna say whatever you do your first address should be here. The first Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment, it's the forum associated with the 501st Legion. Whether you want to join the 501st Legion, whether you know who they are or not, join this forum. It's not just for 501st Legion members. In fact, when I signed up, I said, look, I have no intention of joining you, but you seem to be the source of information on this. Can you help me out? And everybody was really helpful. In the end, I did join. It's a great club. But that's not uh, the subject of our video today. Seriously, this has everything you need. And I'm going to look at Stormtrooper armor, which is available based on the recommendations from the 1st Imperial Stormtrooper det Detachment, this detachment forum, the forum dedicated to Stormtrooper costumes within the 501st Legion. Because back then that was pretty much everything I had. Luckily, I found this. I went back. I, looking back, I went and no, I saw a stormtrooper costume, a licensed, official licensed stormtrooper costume in a like a fancy dress shop. It was pretty expensive, it was one thousand two hundred euro, euros or something like that, and it looked okay. But I started doing some research, looking for alternatives or some more some cheaper stuff. But I found, luckily, found this forum. And back then, the forum of the UKG, the garrison of the 501st Legion in the UK, and they, those guys helped me out a lot. This has got to be your first address. I'm going to do this, make this video based on the recommendations of the staff at the FIST, First Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment. It's the, the address to this forum is in the description and an address to this thread. You don't need to start anywhere else apart from this thread. This thread says at the top the various types of armor and where to find them. This is a list of vetted vendors, people who are approved, who have a proven track record to being, of being reliable and of selling you something that is going to look good when it's built. And we're going to go through these one by one. Things have changed since uh, I was first starting out. I've pretty much found my favourite, as I say, I will recommend you one maker at the end of this, but you can pretty much accept that these are all recommended, these are all acceptable. And this this thread is great, it's got some important information to bear in mind that we're not going to look at today, talking about what your budget is, what your side of body is, how experienced you are, etc what materials you're looking for. Nowadays this is a little bit out of date, this thread is very old, nobody really makes anything out of hips plastic anymore. Um, it's pretty much all ABS and there are is some PVC but ABS is the stuff you really want to, if you want something really authentic. So let's go straight down. There's things to avoid 
I also have videos on this subject where not to buy Stormtrooper armor. It's very easy to go on Amazon these days and find ready-built Stormtrooper armor. Check out this thread, uh, sorry, this, this video from me about why not to do that on what you should avoid. Definitely two makers, three, two or three makers you should avoid. And here, let's get into the list of vetted makers. These, while there are many sources of armor, they say here, the list below contains those who have a proven track records of honest business dealings. Now, there's a mention here also that they are free from recast debates. We're not going to go into the subject of recasting here, but this, there is no strict policing policy in in the 501st about recasting. You can use recast armor to get approved. Nobody polices that, but at the same time, the first Imperial Stormtrooper Department does discard any makers from the list that they believe has been recasting. Recasting very, very quickly because it's a massive subject. Makers who are perceived to have copied other people's work. Lots of grey areas, we're not going to go into it there, but just bear that in mind. These are considered to also be makers that have their own work or at least legitimate copies. I say, it's a complicated, complicated subject. I'm going to start off with ATA, Affordable Trooper Armour. It is indeed, or it certainly was back then, when I was more involved with the theme, one of the more affordable uh, affordable suits of armour. I can't go into pricing here. You have to contact the, the makers. As I say, just go on this thread. If you don't want to listen to me rambling, ram, rambling on all the time, you, don't, you can switch off this video and just go and look at this thread yourself. But I will be looking at some pictures so you can get a bit of more impression also giving you some background. ATA is from a long line of stormtrooper types of stormtrooper armor that are actually derived from a Return of the Jedi suit. I think it started with a guy called Cameron Oakley. He had access to a suit that was used for filming Return of the Jedi, made some molds from that from the outside of the parts which is kind of unconventional that normally done from the inside. Those moulds are actually still in circulation and probably being put to their best use and that is to make a Return of the Jedi suit because there was quite a lot of, were quite a lot of differences between Return of the Jedi and the suits in the first two films because in fact they were cast from the original run of suits that were used for the first two movies and they were quite different. But nowadays a guy called Mark CFO cast from originally is using those old molds to actually produce really really great Return of the Jedi armor. We will look at that in another thread. Maybe get Mark on here for an interview. He doesn't know about this yet, but I'm probably going to ask him to do a Zoom uh, call with me. I mean, he can he can tell us all about that. But we're focusing on A New Hope and Return of the uh, and Empire Strikes Back in this video. Looking at that first style of armor. An ATA, as I say, was is a set of moulds from this long line of Cameron Oakley moulds. They Over time they were converted. There's a, a, an old maker that used to sell, it was called TE, Trooper Expert. He had those moulds and he converted those to make them into, made little modifications to turn them into an, a new hope as original episode 4 type of armour. And for a long time that was the most kind of accurate thing we had in the way that it had lineage. It was actually cast from an original suit with the few differences, the limitations of being from a Return of the Jedi suit. And then there was TE2, the mold was sold on, and then TE2 stopped making stuff and he allowed ATA to make copies of the molds. But they, was, they were very good molds. I mean, we got onto authentic props AP here. This is the second one in the in the list. This also shares the same lineage, the same histories, the same origins from the same type of mould, but I think there were some modifications done to the AP. Let's have a look at some pictures then. This is this is what an ATA suit looks like. As I say, back to my pet hate, this is reasonably well built, built, but there's no need for those gaps. Check out my other videos if you want to know about building this properly. One of the things you'll notice, or maybe not see it on here, the ridges on the, this is a cover strip. The original suits were butt jointed, the completely flat joint like that, with this cover strip over the top to actually join it. Bear in mind when they did Return of the Jedi, they cast from one of these old suits, so 
the cover strips were in there so you have this ridge in the mold so you have with this being cast from a Return of the Jedi suit what they did with Return of the Jedi they used that ridge to make an overlapping seam so you have a ridge and an overlap like that makes it very very easy to build actually um, good starter kit if you want to build with overlapping seams and don't want to do the whole extra work of the um, external cover strips but bear in mind it will have ridges in certain areas that the original suits didn't have because it's from a Return of the Jedi suit. Um, I think you'll be able to find some more information about cover strips in this video. As I say, I have lots of tu tutorials. If you want to know about building, watch the tutorials. There's a big a whole playlist. Um, it looks great. The, as I say, it's it's pretty much as unmodified as as it could be, but with with the or the different details. For example, the if you look at comparisons of Return of the Jedi and and, and New Hope, these so notice these these parts here, these uh, buttons, these ab buttons, are slightly different. That's one of the modifications that had to be done. Good looking kit, and by all accounts, it's pretty reasonably priced. It's going to be better for smaller maybe thinner troopers it's not got so much option of variation because of course the seams these overlapping seams the ridges I was talking about they are pretty much set in the mold there's not much scope for making parts wider whereas other kits may have more allowance in the in the kit to do so that's ATA let's go back to the original thread as I say authentic props from Canada uh, another thing to point out here, sorry before we go on, ATA, it says HIPS material. I don't believe they're using any HIPS material anymore. HIPS is really quite brittle and uh, prone to tearing. ABS, I think they exclusively use ABS. HIPS was more more economical, a bit cheaper, but ABS is like the originals and it's a lot more tough um, hard wearing. Authentic props, Let's see if I can find some pictures. Yeah, this is a built authentic props kit. You see, it looks very much very similar. It's also made from ABS as standard. One thing to bear in mind with ATA, this is as you can see, it's a slightly bigger built trooper. This is what I was talking about. It's better for maybe slimmer, smaller troopers. The chest. I talk about this in other videos, I won't go into it too much now. The chest with it being derived from um, Return of the Jedi suit is narrower. You compare that to something like here. This is a chest on my RS, which is cast from an original A&H trooper. You see it's a lot wider. It's because of the nature of how they, they cast it and cut off the return edges. So it's got quite a thin pigeony chest. It's not great if you're kind of beefy or a little bit got carrying a little bit more weight. But it's it was my first ever kit. I'll see show you how it works on somebody who was is five foot nearly five foot eight, so one meter seventy two and like seventy kilos, just around eleven stone. It's a good fit. It was a very um, pay no attention to that. I've trimmed off the bottom of that was my own experience. Trimmed off the bottom of the chest plate to make in it, so it's more like the Luke Skywalker cut-off thing. I would go about that a, a different way these days, but you can see it's a good fit for somebody like that. It was a very easy build, being a beginner, as I said. In the end, I did go with the cover strips route. It's a good option, but I find that. Because of it being better for the thinner trooper, I think Mark, I think his name is at AP, has done some modifications and it doesn't quite look. I think certain parts have been made a bit wider and it's been a, the sac for, you know uh, to do so is sacrifice some of the shape, particularly in the the thighs. I think actually, to be perfectly honest, ATA, if you can get it, 
is a slightly better option. I do mention something availability from Authentic Props 4 to 8 weeks, that seems about right. ATA, back when I was more in the loop, I don't know what the, the situation is these days, it took a very long time. There was a, a waiting list with limited slots, it could be like up to nine months or something, there's limited slots per month. And with it being reasonably priced, there was a long, long waiting list. But as I say, contact the maker. Here, it does say that AP, Authentic Props, does offer a fully built, ready to wear, out of the box kit. May be true, I don't think that is the standard, and I think the waiting time would be a long time. I remember I, I got a bit annoyed when I first ordered mine because it said it. I sent them email out asking about availability, said they were available in stock straight away and the reality was it took more than eight weeks for it to, to get to me. I'd be wary of getting a commission done with, it, with something ready built, but it's possible. Talk to the makers, uh, everything is possible. Then we've got of course RS Prop Masters. This, as I say, things have changed a lot since I was involved. When I first started this was the only thing we had, the only reference. You had to kind of find the forum, find this thread, and then try and do your research in the forum, find out what they are. There was certainly nothing available immediately online apart from Shepherds and Design Studios and what I found, uh, Jedi Robe. And those landed, both of those landed in, ended up in my video of armors that you shouldn't buy. And everything that was legit, let's say, was just in this thread. But nowadays, of course, with the court rule link that allowed Shepparton Design Studios to continue selling online and deemed that the copyright or whatever, the artistic rights to the suit didn't apply in the UK, that allows now RS Prop Masters to have their own website here. We're going to open that in another tab to sell. And people who know that the channel will know that this is my absolute my only recommendation RS prop masters have completely revolutionized the prop making business when it comes to stormtroopers this is the only kit that is first generation molded from that's one that's available from an original a and h a new hope episode 4 kit cast from the original thing with some parts that were a bit damaged had to be kind of rebuilt them but basically this the skeleton of it the basic thing of this is absolutely unbeatable it is the real thing it's my armor of choice it's not going to be the cheapest but it's also these days it's going to be the easiest because look at this they've got their own website and you can just go in the store you've got instant access to lots of Costumes, stormtrooper suits. You really are spoiled. View the product, choose your options, and you can even look, as I say, you can choose New Hope version, you can choose what plastic you want, you can choose to have your boots, you can payment plan, and this is, of course, stormtrooper fully finished commission. It's going to cost up to £1,450, but it's going to be ready to make, ready to make, ready to wear, sorry, ready made, ready to wear. Lots of information. Here we go, look. Proud to offer the only true lineage props for a series of characters from the original trilogy, Star Wars. Everything that they have, in particular, the game changer here was the Stormtrooper suit is made from their original props that they have acquired and moulded. As I say, this is the only one. Everybody wants to look like A New Hope, the Stormtroopers in the original movie, and this is the only one that is absolutely legitimately cast from an original suit, and it's, it's worth the money if you can afford it. Okay. Yeah, it says here, got all the options. Check out this thread yourself, by all means. Also, there's a few other options. RWA Creations this is a new one to me. This is um, an interesting one. There's a picture of the kit. And I had to look this up. It's a guy, Ross Walmsley, apparently, in the Isle of Wight. Looks like a 
good option, especially if you're in the UK. And there's a thread he introduced himself and he posted it all. I actually think this has been my theory of theory for a while that some fan sculpted so-called fan sculpts of Stormtrooper kit. This is how they actually originally started out. As he says here, with we had an old overcast Return of the Jedi TK kit. So something that's going to have lineage from the Cameron Oakley moulds I told you about, the Return of the Jedi Stormtroopers that were then cast to try and make an A&H thing, but largely the moulds were, were left alone. And this is Looks like a great effort. This is very transparent. This is pretty much saying we used the bit, the old suit as a recast basis, but we made it our own. This is my theory that this has been the way other fan sculptors have gone without actually having any evidence. But here's some evidence they've done it very transparently. Look, we took that, cast it, and we built our own different molds and modified it to look like a new hope. The helmets were very different. Here you see that work in progress, how they changed all the things. But the kit turned out really nice and the finished suits, you can see it in the finished suit, they also offer a good option here, extra long shins if you are taller, certainly not my problem. A lot of taller troopers find the shins to be short, as I say not my problem. Definitely an option if you're in the UK and the kits, I've seen the, thing, the things built, they, they seem okay. As I say, contact the maker, contact data details are here, there's always an email there, or on, on Facebook. Then we also have another one, T stroke MC, this is kind of a, a collaboration with someone who's well known in the prop community, Mon Cal, there's lots of other um, stuff. My experience with Mon Cal is that the deliveries are kind of hit and miss, takes a long time, a lot of it's kind of idealised, it's not my choice, but this is another one that's got the same lineage, this old TE, Cameron Oakley, Return of the Jedi lineage, available, to, available to, here we go, three to four months for delivery and sometimes sooner than that, yeah, three to four months is kind of standard for Mon Cal. money up front. Then we've got WTF, Waltz Trooper Factory, um, a fan sculpt, a genuine fan sculpt, I think we have some pictures here. So it's built from scratch. One thing I find quite kind of interesting. This was built very nicely. This is someone. This is a female trooper. She's five foot seven and what did you say 140 pounds, so slim and quite short, my size. Saying this is a complete fan sculpt. It's very well done. It looks quite very. It looks very close to the TE and the Cameron Oakley, the Return of the Jedi lineage. So particularly the, the thighs certainly seems to be inspired by that. If we look at this, CFO. This is where the original molds came from. This is now being used to make a Return of the Jedi trooper. This is a trooper that I built that I got from Mark from cast from original. You can see these thighs are very much telltale tail sign. It was also here. Okay, that's the AP. Yeah, it's hard to see, but believe me, these these thighs are very much a, a feature. Very pointed right thigh and a much more rounded left thigh. That's very much a common feature of of the uh, of armor with that lineage. And I'm seeing that, that is very much based on that. Very much inspired by that. If if I didn't know any better, I would say that that was with lineage. And it also seems to work well with somebody who's slimmer and, and shorter as well. Yeah, nice build, good option if you're in the USA, I imagine. Then we have another one that's worth mentioning, RT Mod, based in Canada, also good for the North, Northern Americans, but particularly designed for the bigger trooper, weightier trooper, taller trooper. Never really looked into that myself. It, it it looks looks fine when it's built, pretty decent for, certainly as a as a fan scope and lots of options if you are bigger, broader, whatever. And then 
the last one would be AM Armor Master. They used to do something which is very much based on one of the really early uh, fan scopes, the FX fan scope that looked very nothing much like a Stormtrooper at all. This is new kit. It's come out. Very, very heavy plastic. 0 0.090 ABS. That's more than two millimeters thick. The originals were one and a half millimeters thick. Lots of armor like the ATA and the AP will be around two millimeters. It's very thick. And I have to say, the Facebook page, you see, it, they also do cater for the bigger trooper here. You can see, look, the molds have this option of making the big bit of allowance in there. It's a lot more accurate in general, but I have to say when I first saw it, I thought it was an RS recast. I'm not going to open that debate. It had too many tells. Certain parts are quite obviously not. They've been recycled from the last suit. Just look like moulds based on RS, which have been converted to help make make it work for even bigger troopers but as long as you're not really really big, big and musc muscly my recommendation still is RS Prop Masters and as I say this is easy this is online shopping it's easy to have it 100% trustworthy you can get it ready made you don't have to even build it yourself but I would encourage everybody to at least consider building their own as we can see building their own look self build kit this this is the 31st of january 2021 so whenever depending on whether when you're watching this video these prices may or may not be current you can see what it what difference it makes helmet required with strapping kit you're going to be 849.99 whereas let's go back and look at what the full commission was 1450 of course get in ABS we've got the new hope boots thrown in you can pay in full straight away or you can have a payment plan pay in installments but it's a big chunk of cash and as I say when I started out I had absolutely no idea what I was doing but I found particularly look this forum I will com repeat this till I'm blue in the face. Go to whitearmor.net and you will find all you need, tools you need. You will have a blast making it. It'll be something you really take pride in and you'll save a big chunk of cash. Of course, the guys at RS will take your me measurements and make sure it works for you. There is also a lot more fear about what does work, what, what sizing has to be done with a, a suit of armor. There's pretty much one size fits most, but if you're if you're within that five foot seven to even as much as six foot and not a massive bodybuilder or not really really obese, you can get this to work. They will take limb measurements and they'll do it for you. It's gonna take a long lot more time and it's also not you know it's a not a factory, it's not a a high-tech factory they do little runs of things so you may be waiting a couple of months whereas the kit itself tends to be available in stock all the time so you pretty much get the kit and immediately you can, you can start making it straight away so genuinely think about building your own it really will be a great experience but if not go with RS Prop Masters and go with RS Prop Masters anyway it's the real deal it's going to be one of the more expensive ones it's from the UK, if that's a geographical thing for you to consider, you might be out dealing with customs, importing it, whatever, especially after Brexit, even in Europe. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's so much closer to the real thing. We're talking about making an accurate Stormtrooper costume that looks like the real deal, and this is cast from the original. You can't really get any closer without entering into the archives, Lucasfilm archives. And not everybody's got access to the Lucasfilm archives. Uh, maybe some suits are a bit more intact than the one that Rob and Sai have got from um, RS Prop Masters. But this is my recommendation. Hope that was useful. Quick overview. And not so quick. Been 
film it for quite a time, some time. But you know, it's a, a big world. There's lots of options. If you did find this video useful, give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel because I think the next stage, if you're going to be buying your costume, you're going to be wanting to build it probably. I've got lots of tutorials. Check out the playlist and I'll be back with more Stormtrooper and costuming content. Thanks for watching. Take care.